Hey everybody, Dr. Jensen with CCJ3701, Research Methods and Criminology. We're continuing part two, building scales and summations. And you notice we kind of got to the very limit of 15 minutes on that last video. So we're gonna pick up where we left off here, um, already in SPSS at apps.ufl.edu using the add health data set. So if you need to take a moment to set up, please pause the video and resume when ready. Okay, so here's our new, scale we just made. Notice it is not labeled. There actually is an opportunity to do a label while you're doing the recoding setup, but I think it's actually just faster to type it in there quick. Drug usage scale. Okay, and hit enter and now you have it nicely labeled. Okay, you do not need to do value labels here. Uh, value labels aren't necessary because you've now taken all these little nominal variables that are categories of yes and no and changed it to a quantity of how many drugs have you used. So a one is a one drug, two is two drugs, three is three drugs. So there's no need to label what a one, a two, and a three means. In fact, you'll find that with every nominal, excuse me, every interval variable, there are hardly ever any value labels. They usually say none because the number is the response itself. So there's no need to label it. Okay, let's run a frequency on our new variable. Here is the descriptive statistics. Scroll down a little bit. There's your scale. So um, here we have a scale that goes from one to 10. Now notice we don't have any zeros. It's kind of interesting. So there was no one that answered, no, I did none of those drugs. Um, there was at least a few people that did one, two or three of those drugs, um, probably using prescriptions without a prescription. I think that's one that a lot of people fudge on. But uh, here are all their scores. So we have um, people that used one drug, two drugs, three drugs, four drugs, and it goes all the way up to 10. Sometimes you won't have all the values leading up to it, but you'll have many of them. It just depends on how people responded to the question. And notice there was one person, well, eight people, that used all 10 drugs. It's pretty fascinating. So this tells you um, how many drugs everybody's using, okay? Now what it doesn't tell you is which drugs they used. That's what those individual questions are for. So if you want to go back and find out who used heroin, who used cocaine, then you'd have to go to those individual questions. This just computes that concept of how many drugs are they using. That's the purpose of this scale. So people are like, well, how do I know which of the one, the two, the five drugs, if they, if, how do I know, you know, out of those people that did five drugs, the ones that were using sedatives or the ones using tranquilizers? Again, that's not the purpose of a scale. You could build a variable using a recode on top of a recode on top of a recode that could tell you who the sedative users are versus the tranquilizer users and stuff. It's a lot more coding on top of itself, but you could fish them out eventually by using conditions and commands and stuff like that. So this just tells us the quantity, how many they're using. That's all we're after. Okay. So this is us checking our scale, make sure it's not lower than zero, not higher than 10. That's how we know we did it right, because if you got an 11 or a 15 or, or a negative, we'd go, wow, we did something terribly wrong, because those numbers aren't even possible. So we have to make sure it fits our plan of what our whole scale was about, between zero and 10. Just so happened nobody actually scored a zero, so that's totally fine, okay? Now again, look at how much missing data we have. Out of a total of 6,504 people, we have missing data on 5,629 of them. That's a lot. 86.5% of people were not included in this scale uh, because they didn't answer all 10 questions. In fact, we only have 875 people in the whole data set that answered all 10 questions. And you may say, well, I mean, that's still a couple hundred people. That's pretty good. But what if you wanted to get after all this missing data and say, well, I, want, I certainly there are drug users in, in that group. How do I get after them? that's when you might want to use a summation, okay? So we're actually going to do that now. Summations, let's go back to our notes. We did a scale, remember with scales, we found all our variables, we kind of designed how they were going to go, what the scores would mean, and it required this and this and this and this. Only the people responding all 10 questions. In a summation, we're doing the same thing, except we're changing how SPSS is counting everybody. Okay, so it's still going to have the same kind of a high score and a low score, except it's going to say this or this or this or this. 
So any people who responded to any of the 10 questions will be scaled and it's very inclusive of your data. Okay, so anyone that answered any of those 10, so I only answered two of the drug questions, I will be computed in your scale. I answered eight of the 10, I will be computed. Okay, only people that answered zero of those questions would not be included in your scale. It does create a problem, again, pros and cons, lower accuracy, but you get a higher sample size. So it, you get more, sorry, many more cases to analyze, right? So we get more of those missing data people out of there, but low accuracy, okay? Low accuracy comes from the fact that if I can score from zero to 10, how do I really know what a four means or what a nine means? or what a seven means. Um, did I get a seven out of seven? Meaning you asked me seven drug questions, I didn't answer the other three drug questions, and yes, I did all seven of those. Or is really seven out of 10 that I did seven out of the 10 drugs? That has a different interpretation. Seven out of seven versus seven out of 10, or two out of 10, or two out of two, or two out of three, or two out of five. Okay, so it's going to give us a different way to measure drug usage. So I put this note down here, be careful with interpretation due to accuracy limitations. We cannot perfectly interpret a score of a 2 or a 4 or a 3 because we don't know exactly how many questions they answered. But depending on what you need for your measurement, maybe that's okay. You'd rather have more people, a little less accuracy, and for your purposes that's fine. Okay, so you have to decide on if that's going to work for you. So let's do the summation. Similar process like the scale, okay? We're gonna go to transform. Let me move this up a little bit so you can see my menus better. Transform, compute variable, same exact place, except, um, and we're gonna have, have the same stuff we just used before. So this is when SPSS is convenient, saves all those variables um, in there, okay? We don't necessarily need them. We're gonna delete those. We're going to change this a little bit to a drug usage summation. Now, it, it actually is a scale too, but I put summation so I can remember what I did to it. Okay. And then in here, before we start plopping variables into our numeric expression, we need to go to this function group area. Okay. So we're going to scroll down until we get to statistical. Then we're going to scroll down even more under here that says functions and special variables, and we're gonna select sum. So then there's a little description, sum, numeric expression, numeric expression, there's little commas and brackets in there, okay? It just describes what the operation is. Once you've selected sum, use this arrow right here and pop it into your numeric expression. You can see it says the word sum, it has parentheses, it has question marks. Your cursor is highlighted over that question mark, okay, right there. We're going to highlight that question mark. We're going to pop a variable where that question mark is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and scroll H4TO all the way down to where those live. Uh, those variables we used before, starting with H4TO63, the prescription med abusers. And we're going to pop that into the numeric expression. Then there's a comma. It's already there for you. We're going to highlight the next question mark and put in the next variable. Okay, then we hit a comma again, no space, put in the next variable, another comma, the next variable, another comma, keep on doing this until you have all 10 variables in there. And again, you know you're done when you have H4TO65E in there. Okay, so there's all 10 of our drug variables. Your expression should look like this, with little commas in between everything. So this tells SPSS, no matter how many of these were answered, sum them all together no matter what. That's what it's saying, okay? All right, so now we're done. Click OK, and it says, yay, you did it, that's great, okay. So it's just a description and syntax of what we performed. Now you need to go to the data set. We can label drug usage summation. We do not need to do value labels. Again, this is an interval variable. 
There's our new variable at the very bottom. Now we are going to, sorry, check our variable, okay? So let's run a frequency or descriptive statistics on our brand new summation we just made. Aha, look at what we have here. So you see how this is different? We now have the zero value in there, okay? That actually accounted for a lot of our missing data. So 32% or 2,136 people actually gave zeros as a response. Why weren't they included in our drug usage scale? Because they didn't answer all 10 questions. So they got thrown out. In a summation, they didn't answer all 10 questions, but we know they didn't do those drugs, so they are still a zero. Now, what if they skipped the drug question because they were uncomfortable or they didn't want to tell you about the drugs they've used? That is certainly possible, okay? Um, but this does give us the use zero out of however many drugs they responded to people. So those would be your never use drugs people, at least on the responses they gave, right? Then we have our ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, and seven, all the way to 10. It still looks like we have those same eight people that did all 10 drugs, but look at how much bigger all these other numbers are, okay? Look how our total is different. Now we have 5,089 people that can be included in this variable. We still have a little bit of missing data, 1,415 cases. Um, that has to do more with people that did legitimate skips or um, not applicable. So this missing data is more true to them not responding in the data in the survey. But now we actually have more cases to analyze. So it depends on what you're after. If you'd rather get higher accuracy, then use a scale. If you want more cases to analyze, use a summation. But again, not as high accuracy because it's hard to interpret what all these mean, okay? So you have to determine what is gonna best suit your needs. But basically, that's how you do a scale and that's how you do a summation. If you have any questions, let me know. And good luck on labs.